What's up my friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about a very basic circuit, but also quite interesting. If you are into electronics, I bet that you've heard about inverters. We have the rectifiers that will pass AC voltage to DC voltage, and then we have inverters that will pass DC voltage to AC voltage. Here on my workshop table, I have a light bulb that requires 220 volts AC voltage. And my power supply, as you can see, it's now set to 12 volts DC voltage. I will now apply the DC voltage to this circuit, and let's see if the light bulb will turn on. As you can see, the light bulb turned on, and I also have the signal here on my oscilloscope. So today, we will see how an inverter works, and also how to get AC voltage out from a 12 volts battery. So for example, if you are in your car and you need 220 volts to charge up your laptop, this will be a very useful circuit for you since it will give you 220 volts AC voltage out from a 12 volts battery. So let's get started. This project is brought to you by JLC PCB, which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. Months back I bought this inverter from a local store and as you can see with a car battery connector. Let's open it and see what's inside. As I've guessed we have a transformer and also some MOSFETs. Let's now apply 12 volts to the input as the voltage of a car battery and I'll connect the oscilloscope to the output. Since the ground of my power supply is the same as the oscilloscope, only connect the probe to one of the outputs. As expected, I have 220 volts and around 55Hz AC output, and also as expected, it's not a perfect sinusoidal wave, as a usual home outlet will give you. That means that some square signal switching is going on here, so I decided to try my own inverter project, so I've tried some circuits that I found on the internet. So let's put this aside and start the tutorial. First, I'll explain you how a basic inverter works. Then we will simulate the circuit with the Arduino and finally make it permanent with a 555 timer circuit. Before we start, be advised. Even this circuit will be low power, it will still be high voltage that could hurt you. So if you're not sure about something or not using proper tools, don't power the circuit. Double check the connections before you apply power and never never touch the AC output. I already did that for you so you don't have to do it. The pain? It's insane. So let's see how the inverter works. We will study a basic inverter circuit with only two switches, in this case two n-channel MOSFETs, so the output won't be a perfect sinusoidal AC voltage as the home outlet will give you, but more like a square wave. So don't use this inverter with high-tech electronics that would need a perfect sine wave. This circuit is useful for mobile and laptops chargers, low power light bulbs and so on both because it is low power but also for not having a perfect sinusoidal output. So, we have 12 volts DC voltage on one side, and we want an oscillating 220 volts and also 60 Hz at the output. For that we will use a transformer like this one, with one coil at the output side and another one at the input, but the coil at the input is divided in half, in such a way that the middle pin will be the main input and then we have two outputs. So let's imagine now that at each output we will add a switch as a push button, connected to ground and the middle pin is connected to 12 volts. If we close the top switch a current will pass only through the first primary coil, so magnetic flux is induced in this direction. The core of the transformer will pass the magnetic flux to the secondary coil and as we all know the output voltage of the transformer will be given by this formula where n is the amount of turns of each coil. But we also know that transformers won't work with DC voltages, so a current will be induced at the output only on magnetic flux change. 
A static magnetic flux like this one that we are applying right now won't induce a current in the secondary coil. Only at the beginning, when the button is pressed, a current will be induced in the coil for a short period of time. Here on the breadboard I've connected the push button to a transformer. This is the pinout of the transformer, two on one side and three on the other. Here we have the output and the input, where the middle pin is the shared pin of the two coils. On the oscilloscope we have the output of the transformer with yellow color and the input with green. As you can see, only for a short period of time, when I press the button, we have a voltage at the output. If I keep the input high by pressing the button, there is no voltage induced in the output coil. So, we will definitely have to close and open the switch in order to achieve an AC voltage at the output. Let's get back to our schematic. The top switch is closed, so magnetic flux is induced in this direction. Now we open the top switch and we close the bottom one. That will induce a current in the bottom primary coil and now reverse the magnetic flux in the core. And that's exactly what we want, since the transformer will only work on magnetic flux changes. So, turning these two switches on and off, one inverted to the other, will create a nice oscillating magnetic flux inside the transformer core. That magnetic flux will induce a current in the secondary coil as we know by the Faraday law. So, if we have a current passing, we have a voltage drop. Using this formula, we can know the amount of turns for each coil. We know that the input will be 12 volts from the battery and let's make the primary coil 100 turns. If we want to have 220 volts at the output, we will need a secondary coil of around 2000 turns. And that's it. All we have to do is to fast toggle these two switches, in order to obtain the AC voltage using the transformer. How fast you say? Well, usually home outlet voltages are between 50 and 60 Hz. That means that we have to turn on and off each switch around 120 times per second and obtain a frequency of 60 Hz. Ok, so of course the circuit won't use this kind of switches. Instead of that we will use MOSFETs. Apply a voltage at its gate and it will be activated as a switch, allowing current to pass from the drain to the source, in case of this IRFZ 44 N channel MOSFET. For the first test we will use the Arduino to apply the square signal at the gate of each MOSFET. We know that the two signals have to be inverted one to each other, so when one is high the other one is low and vice versa. We also know that the MOSFETs will work at 12 volts, but the Arduino only works with 5 volts. So, if we want to apply 12 volts at the MOSFET gates, we have to use a MOSFET driver. The most basic MOSFET driver will be in this case a BJT MPN transistor like this one at the gate of each MOSFET. The pull-up resistor is connected to 12 volts, so when the NPN transistor is off, the voltage at the gate would be 12 volts. But when we activate the MPN transistor, the voltage will drop to ground. So that easy, we could obtain a square wave with values from 0 to 12 volts and apply it to the MOSFET gate. I'll mount the next schematic on one of my breadboards for tests. Connect the base of the two NPN transistors to pin 3 and 5 from the Arduino, with a 100 ohm resistor to each. Remember to also share ground between the Arduino and the main circuit. There you have it, the two RFZ44 N channel MOSFETs, the BJT drivers with the pull-ups to 12 volts, the transformer, a big input capacity to make sure that we have a stable input, the Arduino here and a 400 volts capacitor at the output, to smooth the square signal. I upload the next small code to the Arduino. As we can see we have two pins, digital pin 3 and 5, defined as outputs. I set to high one of the pin and to low the other one, and after just 8 milliseconds I do the opposite and add another 8 milliseconds delay. That will give me a 62 Hz square signal on those pins, as we can see here on my oscilloscope. I've got my transformer from an old 12 volts charger that I had in my workshop. You could wind your own transformer if you want. Since you will probably want to carry this circuit in your car, you would want to use small transformers, 
but in my case, for this example, I have a big one and also with metal core. For higher efficiency, try to use ferrite core. Anyway, I've made all the connections, uploaded a code and connected a 15 watts fluorescent light bulb at the output. This light bulb requires 220 volts and 60 Hz voltage. So let's see if our circuit works. I applied 12 volts at the input and there you go. The light turns on with no problems. I connect the oscilloscope at the output and as you can see we have a 220 volts output. So the inverter works. By the way, this is a very low power inverter. I've tried higher power light bulbs and it didn't work. I've measured the resistance of one of the primary coils of the transformer and it is around 6 ohms. So applying 12 volts at the coil, there will be around 2 amps of current passing. So 12 volts times 2 amps is equal to an input power of 24 watts. Of course, this is the ideal input power. I haven't calculated the real power for this circuit. Ok, so using the Arduino wouldn't be that efficient. In this example, I've powered the Arduino with a USB cable, but in a real inverter I should also supply it from the battery. And that will draw the battery even faster, since the Arduino is using linear voltage regulators for 5 and 3.3 volts, which are not efficient at all. So, how to create our square signal without the Arduino? A better solution is using a 555 timer. One configuration of this timer creates a perfect square wave at the output. Another good thing is that this chip could work directly with 12 volts, so no driver for the MOSFET is needed. This is the basic schematic for the 555 timer that creates one square wave at the output. I mount it on a breadboard and adjust the potentiometer till I get a signal of 50 or 60 Hz, which is the value that I want. The problem is that this timer only creates one signal, but we need two, one inverted to the other. For that I should invert this signal that I already have. I'll do that using the simplest inverter ever, another BJT transistor with a pull up to 12 volts. When the timer signal is high, the transistor is activated, so the output is low. That easy we have inverted the signal, and now we have our inverted signals as you can see here. Connect each one of these signals to the gate of the MOSFETs, as in this final schematic, and let's test the circuit once again. There you go, this circuit works as well, but in this case we don't need the Arduino or to regulate the voltage for it. In this way it should be much more efficient. We directly apply 12 volts at the input and obtain the AC at the output, as the inverter that we talked about before. I gather all the components that I need get a piece of drill PCB and make all the connections. Here I have the main 12 volts input and here the AC output. So there you go guys, there you have it. This is a very basic circuit. Using a full bridge inverter and other fine adjustments for the signals, you could get better and better and even achieve a perfect sine wave output. Also try using better transformers than I've used. You have more information, schematics, codes and examples in the description below so make sure you check those out. If you would like to help my projects like this one, I have a Patreon campaign, the link is down below as always. I would really really appreciate that guys, and by the way thanks to all my Patreons. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.